Jumbo, Karibu, welcome, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Yes. This is PNI Conversations. I am your host Kennedy Maruru and I am with Pastor George Mulinge. Thank you, Ken. Karibu sana. Asante. Glad to have you. Thank you so much. You have been very very <laughs> wow. useful in the, in the previous programs. I, I have uh, learned so much. I am humbled. Please like, subscribe, comment. Say something to us because we value your feedback. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Sure. Mm. So we've been discussing about the report. Exactly. Yes, yes. the report that the 12 yes. spies were required to bring back. Yes. And 10 gave one report. Yes. And two gave another. Exactly. So we want to understand yeah. this report. Yes. How is it to come in line with sound doctrine you <laughs> mentioned something about yes. they going searching the land exactly understanding what entails yes. in the land and then bringing and bring it back, it back to the, the report people. exactly so pastor and as you actually you know see from that scripture mm. we have only two out of 12 yeah. that brings in a credible report it's very and like you said mm. you know they were found as men of a different spirit. Mm. I would call them men of faith. And that tells us that, uh, one, pastors are the custodians of the truth. Mm. And they are to search the scriptures to understand this truth. Mm -hmm. You know, and number two, they are to stand their ground, yes. to stand and defend or contend for the truth, mm. regardless of what comes on their way. Yeah. A lot of times we compromise standing by the truth mm. because of the things that we go through, yes. because of the sufferings. Mm. And uh, we are not able to actually stand by the truth because mm. of what people will say or because of the problems that we have got to go through mm. or the pressure that we love to find. Mm. And I'm afraid of saying this because I feel for the past is because most churches have not been prepared mm -hmm. with the correct report, yeah. with the report of the Caleb and Joshua kind of report. Mm. They have a facet of truth, but not the whole truth. Yeah. And therefore, you remember the scripture says, the bride or the church that Jesus is coming from, mm. it is without spot, without it is without blemish, without mm. wrinkle or any such a thing. Yes. So the church must be perfect. Mm -hmm. And how will they be the church perfect? If we don't have perfect pastors mm. or pastors that... I'm not saying that there are people that are perfect. No. But we are to contend, as we find the book of Jude, mm. chapter number 1, verse number 3. Yeah. We are to contend for our faith. Because this faith is under an attack. Mm -hmm. And the enemy wants us not to stand in the faith to the end. Mm. Therefore, we end up compromising because of the things that we go through. And we fear talking about the truth. Mm. Or we fear standing out by the truth. Mm. It is the two spies who stood so strong, mm. devoid of any fears or any intimidation. Mm. But the rest of the ten, they're in the class of those who did not bring a good report. Mm. They, in fact, if they were to be labeled today, they would be looked at as apostates. Mm. False preachers, mm. false teachers, yeah. which are the majority today within the church. Yeah, interestingly, they yes. were the majority. Exactly, and they were the majority then. Mm. Yeah. While Caleb and Joshua were the minority. <laughs> exactly. The ones that yeah. you don't hear so much sure. about. Sure, 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 sure. That's true, Pastor. Mm. So you've talked about the church, that the bride of Christ, rather, yes. uh, is required to be without spot or blemish. Mm. And we can see in the related scripture, that is Ephesians 5, mm. that it is washed by the water of, of the water of the word. The word. So yes. it is important in exactly. rightly dividing exactly. the word. Exactly. Rightly divided word, the truth. Mm. Yes, the yes. truth. And do you know matters having to do with faith? Mm. The faith mm -hmm. has to deal with that truth. Mm. Yeah, there's no faith without the truth. Yes. <laughs> mm. There's no tr faith without truth. In my book, I've covered a whole chapter on false teachers. Mm. Preceding that which is taught by the false teachers mm. is the truth. Yeah. 
is the instructions to Titus to preach the truth. Yes. You know, the message that accords to sound doctrine, mm -hmm. to the truth. Yeah. When you look at what the scripture there puts it very clear, Paul is telling Timothy that he is to stand by this truth because of a number of reasons. Mm. Number one, that the, you know, uh, let me, give me a second, let me go there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so it's when you read verse number one, but speak as for you, teach what accords to Sound, Sound doctrine. doctrine. Yeah. And then he talks about older men. It goes about the young mm -hmm. women, the young men, the servants. In verse number five, this is to be taught so that the word of God is not reviled, mm -hmm. is not underrated, mm -hmm. is not mocked. And then he also says that the opponents, when the truth is spoken, number eight, the opponents will have nothing to accuse the ministers mm. or those who preach about it, mm -hmm. you know. And then uh, finally, that the word of God may be adored, mm. may be respected. Yes. That is what accords to the doctrine of sound doctrine. Now, because of not preaching the sound doctrine, because of not traversing through the scriptures and getting to understand the truth, mm. there's been a lot of questions of our integrity mm. in as far as the doctrine of scripture mm. is concerned. Yeah. People have questioned the word of God. Mm. They have questioned the church. Mm. They have questioned our integrity mm. because of not handling the word of the truth and not teaching the correct gospel. Okay. If we do it well, then the three things will have been accomplished. The name of God will not be reviled. The word of God will be respected. And those who castigate and smear garbage, they will have nothing to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But how do we deal with the false teachers? Mm. Because they are the majority. Mm, they are the majority within the church. And well, I think the question is, how do we deal with them? Yeah. You know, I like what he says in verse... <laughs> In verse number, when you look at that same chapter, and I've covered this is my book, eh? mm. uh, what should be done to them? It says, verse number 10 of chapter number 1, it says, really, for there are many unruly men, mm. vain talkers, and deceivers, especially they that are of the circumcision, whose mm -hmm. mouth must be stopped. <laughs> mm -hmm. They must be stopped. Uh-huh. Because there are men who overthrow whole houses. Yeah. Another translation says they overthrow whole families by teaching that which should not be taught mm. for shameful gain. They teach that which is not supposed to be taught. So false teachers teach that which is not supposed to be taught. Mm. They teach not the truth. Mm. They bring... Not a full report. Yeah. They bring a discouraging, disappointing report. Mm. And that is what Paul is saying. They must be stopped. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Moses had the responsibility of... He really had to stop these ten guys mm. because of bringing <laughs> an incorrect report. Yeah. And upheld the report of Caleb and Joshua. Mm. I see Paul really was concerned about this because he spent a majority of the time in trying to get Titus to make sure he sets yes. things in order. Exactly. And even with Timothy, he's quick to remind Timothy in yes. the beginning that he should not take heed yes. to such men who exactly. spend so much time mm -hmm. in empty you know, mm -hmm. words and fables and, 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 and genealogies and things of like men. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. He plays out their character. Yeah. You know, these are false teachers. Another translation of that same scripture, mm -hmm. verse number 10 says, For there are many insubordinate both idol talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. Mm. So these false teachers classified in scripture, they want to get that which is not honestly gained. Yeah. It's good for us to apply it in our places, pastors. Mm. How can I become an apostate? How can I become 
a person who is classified in the category of the ten spies. spies yeah. I can when I step out of faith, mm. when I am not standing by the truth. Mm. And people don't know when they begin to drift away. They really don't know. Yeah. They find themselves having drifted away. Mm. But basically what you find here in what Paul is telling Titus compared to that of the ten spies mm -hmm. under Moses, you will find people speaking things that people want to hear yeah. and not concentrating on the faith. And most of us pastors, we are guilt mm. of only keeping the church hyped mm. and selecting portions that will make the people stick in the church mm. and hear what is supposed to be heard and not necessarily what is the report of the Lord. Yeah. I think we are guilty of that and mm. we need to really repent and come back to the Lord mm. because we're looking at the ten spies under Moses. Yeah. I think the fate of the ten spies was so bad. Mm. When we read the scripture, I don't remember exactly what happened with them in the end yeah. because of relaying and causing the people not to continue to, in the faith, yeah. to give up about the land. Mm. It's the same thing with what will happen to us because we are under shepherds and under Christ. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we must give an account mm. with the book of Hebrews. Yeah. We must give an account. Mm -hmm. Now, if we will give an account, Second Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 10, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that every man gives an account mm. of everything done yeah. in his body, whether good or bad. Mm. You can imagine we are standing in the presence of the Lord to give an account mm -hmm. of the flock that the Holy Spirit made us overseers yeah. and the report that we brought to the people mm. relative to <laughs> taking the land. Yeah. <laughs> Did we give them the wrong report? Mm. And I think there are serious ramifications. There will be serious ramifications at the judgment seat of Christ. Mm. But the one thing that I pray and do make every effort to do mm. is to that day when I stand before the Lord. The Lord looks at me as a shepherd or as a leader of his people. Mm. And he will tell me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Yeah. That is my aspiration. That is my desire. And uh, in the end, we know the children of Israel settled in the land. Yeah. They settled in the land based on the report of two people. Mm. We may not be so many that are standing by the truth and denying ourselves. Remember what Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, mm. let him deny himself. Deny himself carry his own cross, yeah. and come and follow me. me. There may not be so many people mm -hmm. like Caleb and Joshua, but you can imagine what it will be mm. if at the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord looks at us with a smile and tells us, go inherit this kingdom that was prepared for you mm. from before time. Yeah. What a joy. What a joy. The mountain, mm. the, land the land of our calling. Yes. The land of our inheritance. Yeah. You've dwelt on the danger of focusing on a message that is not sound doctrine. Exactly. Actually, Paul calls it another gospel. Another gospel. Yes. yes. Many must be wondering, okay, so what then should we teach? What is this sound doctrine? Exactly. Yeah. And I think that is a very important question. Mm. When it comes to what we need to teach, we basically need to look at Number one, where are we brought out from? Mm. We learned from Israel that they were brought out of the land mm -hmm. in which they were born. The land which was not theirs. Yeah. The land under the Assyrian pharaoh. Mm. The land of Egypt. Mm. Which is always a type of the world. Mm -hmm. You and me have been raised up, have been born in a land that is not ours yeah. in the world. Mm. It's out of God's word that brings us out of that land. Mm from that place of death to life. Mm -hmm. So in our preaching, we must be able to preach the message of grace through faith. Yes. That when people f put faith in Christ, mm -hmm. according to Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 8, it is by the grace that you are saved, not of your works. Yeah. After putting faith in that which God has already done, having to do with the penalty of our sin, mm -hmm. or having to do with the sacrifices that he made, 
by offering his son to die mm. on the cross for our sins. Mm -hmm. The message of grace, which is free. We preach that as pastors and mm -hmm. get people out of there and bring them into this realm where they will begin to see the kingdom. I mean, I always like to parallel the whole thing with the children of uh, Israel. of Israel under Moses. Yeah. When that night they moved out of Egypt, they mm. went through the Red Sea. Yes. God opened the Red yes. Sea as a dry land and they went on the other side. Mm. They could not go back. Yeah. You know, because after they crossed, the, the waters sea. came back. Yeah. And therefore, just like what Jesus said, if any man has believed in me, mm. he has crossed from death to life. Yeah. And he has eternal life. So we cross from the place of death mm -hmm. onto life. Yeah. And it's after they had crossed the Red Sea that they began to see from a distance mm. the land covenanted by God to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. They began to see it from afar off. Yeah. So after we get saved, then we begin to see the land mm. that God, Jesus Christ promised for us, yeah. to begin to see the hope set before us. Mm. We begin thinking about what Jesus said, I have gone to prepare a place for you. Mm. The kingdom of the heavens that mm. Christ talked about, yes. the heavenly land. Mm. We begin to think about it. Mm. And as we begin to think about it, after the preacher has preached that message, then mm. the next thing it is to preach to this person he needs to preach about the glories mm. that are set before this person that has just gotten saved. Yeah. The hope that lies before the them. Hope. The message about how that kingdom looks like. Mm. And the ten spies, because you know, the people of Israel had believed in Moses. They had mm. been brought from the place of death yeah. significantly. Mm -hmm. And now they represent Christians that have been saved. Yes. Now the spies had been sent to go spy the land. Mm -hmm. Just as pastors are sent to spy the land, mm. bring back a report. Yeah. So we are to bring this report to the people. And mm -hmm. the work of the pastor is to consistently, constantly teach the people about the report. Mm. The report. Yes. The report. Mm. Teach them constantly. Mm. So the message has to do with the grace of God through faith mm -hmm. and the glories that are to follow after we have received the grace of God. Yes. If we package our message in that order, I think we'll have no room for deception. Yeah. Yeah. And in this book, you've dealt in two I've, aspects of I've that I've dealt message. in those two aspects. Very well, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. like in Titus yeah. chapter 1, where exactly. you say that in the hope, of age-lasting age life. life. Yes. yes. That God promised before time began, or mm. before, you know, if, be, before yes, time. Yes, before yeah. time. Mm. And also in, in, in Titus 2. Yes. Maybe we'll talk about that in the next episode. Exactly. How uh, we are to the grace of God has appeared. Exactly. Uh, to all men yes. teaching us to say no to ungodliness. To ungodliness, yeah. And, and all these things. <laughs> exactly. And then <laughs> living... Yes. In a godly manner, yes. looking forward to that glorious appearing Amen, of our great God and yeah. Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yes. So that is the message that, that is the we message. focus on now. That is the message. Yes. It's the message, nothing else. Mm. Because once the children of Israel had received the correct message, mm. they would be ready to go and get into the land which they had been promised. Mm. Them. Once Christians get the message, they are sure of getting into the land and settling mm. it. Yes. Yeah. But there are many impediments. Mm -hmm. There are many enemies. Yeah. You know, just like but, the land that mm. the children of Israel were to occupy, it already been occupied by giants and by enemies. Mm. So the people need to know that there are enemies in the land for which they are called. <laughs> and how will they yeah. know without a preacher? Yes. <laughs> and how will they believe? How will they not believe <laughs> without <a> hearing? <laughs> That's true, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is very interesting. <laughs> Setting things in order. If I were you, I would grab myself this book because all these things we're talking about and yeah. much more yeah. are in this book. And people are asking how much if you're in the U.S. or you're in another country, mm. it's $20. Yeah. yeah. But in Kenya, it's 1,000 1, shillings. shillings. Yes. And you will be filled with so much. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Mm, I have enjoyed in the last few episodes, we've been talking about the message, yes. the report, yes. and today we are talking about that which is the sound doctrine. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> viewers, it's been a wonderful journey, yes. and there is more to come. 
So make sure you share. Tell us what you've learned. If there are questions, you can reach out to Pastor. Yeah. Send a message uh, directly and let him know that I need clarification in this. Exactly. Thank you so much. This has been PNI Conversations. I've had a wonderful time with our host, our founder, Pastor George. Yes, thank you. So much getting out of you. I hope we can squeeze some more in the next. <laughs> You're looking forward. Yes. Thank you, Ken. There's so much. <laughs> Thank you.